referring to Jesus at his crucifixion, then during that three-day period, he ministered to the spirits. That's Peter you're quoting. Oh, James yeah, Peter, anyway. Yeah, yeah. First a little Peter, different. Yeah, and, sorry. Yeah. Context Pe is first, different, too. First Peter, Jesus um, goes and ministers to the, the, the spirits that. in prison. He doesn't, doesn't say that. Sure it does. says he proclaimed to them. Well, he, that's, that's, that's talking to him, if you ask me. Well, I'm sure he did. Yeah. He proclaimed well, the judgment the of God. Sure. There's also the example of Jesus meeting Moses and Elijah on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration. I mean, the, the purpose of the law in dealing with spiritism is because people would be influenced or dominated by an evil spirit world. But Tom, the, so anyway, it's, it's, yeah, I, the, the thing I think the guys are getting at is the fact is if Jesus is God, then he makes up the rules. And in the Old Testament, he does rule with an iron hand. And he says anybody else that talks to them, mm -hmm. they shouldn't. They've got a big problem. I think that's what the fellows are referring to. Jesus, yeah. because he is God, if he says jump, they jump. If he's in total control, why is the world out of control? Because we have freedom to act in rebellion against the law of God, because without freedom there is no moral choice and there can be no love. All right. Well, then that's what, why. The, all the, this whole program, this whole series of programs, the image I'm getting from the traditional Christian thought is that Christianity has done no wrong. That Christianity is, is in a position of having, have, having uh, done everything that it's supposed to do. In my honest opinion, when you look at America today, when you look at the situation of the world, the world is crying out for a true Christian renewal, a true application of the gospel, for the revitalization of the lifestyle that Jesus left us. And I get so sad when we go on and on and on about... But you can't get it from Korean cultism. Well, I, I really, uh, let, me, let me tell you how Over painful here. it is for you to throw out this and brandish the word cult, which you yourself in your own pamphlets tell your own people not to use uh, glibly. I don't belong to a cult. I belong to a church. I belong to a church of Christ, of Jesus Christ. I don't like being called a cultist, a moony. I am not brainwashed. I'm doing what I'm doing because I believe in it wholeheartedly. And I see in America that we are not going to accomplish God's will for America unless yeah. Christianity unites and fulfills its purpose. And to yeah. debate and fight about doctrine and theology is not going to solve the problem that is being caused by the sinfulness and the faithlessness of our own church and our own believers. Yeah. I think the problem is, Tom, is that we love your enthusiasm, but you've got to realize that you have to examine the object that you place your faith in. Of course, and I've done And Christians for can't years. throw their mind away, and we haven't mm -hmm. heard solid information of why we ought to leave Jesus Christ and the revelation no that he... No one is asking had. anybody to leave Jesus Christ, But you Christ, see, John. from what you were saying, if we accepted what you were saying, we are leaving Jesus no, Christ. I haven't left all. Jesus Christ. I have not left Jesus Christ, and if you say that I have, you are wrong. And I've come into a relationship of Jesus Christ even since joining the Unification Which Church. Which Jesus? The are Jesus we Christ Jesus? who lived right. 2,000 years ago. Wait a minute, now let's, let's get down to it. The Jesus the Christ Jesus who was sent by God. In no, other words, the Jesus of 2,000 years ago. God no, the Father no, has yes. been conducting a providence of salvation for all of human history. That providence, that providence of salvation is the main trunk line of history. Are you talking Jesus about an came, office? The office of Christ? Jesus came as the Son of God, as the Christ, as the living incarnation of God but to you deny conduct him as that God. just a minute, to conduct that providence. That providence is still taking place today. And the challenge that people 2,000 years ago had is the challenge that people have today, yeah. which is to go beyond where they're Again, at. Again, I appreciate your enthusiasm on it, but we've got to define words. And if we're talking about the office of Christ, no way is Christianity saying that. We're if we're going to argue, we've got to argue on the same terms. I think that's what Dr. Martin I'm was talking about. To. The person Jesus Christ. Well, let, let's the let him respond Jesus to what you were saying and is talking in my about. Heart. Right. The scripture says it's possible. Uh, you said this many times here. You said this is an intimate thing with me. This is a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. He's sharing it with us. We appreciate that. Now understand how I feel. Okay. okay. I came from liberal Protestantism. Fatherhood of God, brotherhood of man, neighborhood of Boston. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had an encounter good. with the living Savior, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. transformed my life. I became a new creation. That's very intimate to me. Mm -hmm. Now, when I hear you use the word Jesus, my ears perk up because we're talking about my Savior. Okay. We talk about salvation. We're talking about the cross. We're talking about what Christ did for us. It's by grace alone and so forth. Now, that registers in the mind of evangelical Christians, classical Christians, immediately. But when we start talking with you, we find out that you have changed the character of Jesus, you have denied the Trinity, you have denied him as God. You said before that he did not create all things. When, he, when the scripture says he did create all things, you have come up with 
a totally different Jesus. A cannot be non-A. Your Jesus and the Jesus of the New Testament are totally different, Tom. Doesn't the divine principle characterize the Christian church as one that will turn against the new Messiah? No, no it's, not, it's not necessarily. In other words, that's, it, it, that could happen. In that fact, could happen. And will. doesn't the uh, divine principle characterize the church during this period of time unable to fulfill what God has planned mm -hmm. for it? No, on the contrary. Let me, let me quote uh, Reverend Moon. You know, for 30 years our movement has been delayed by the initial rejection mm -hmm. I received when I first declared this message. Koreans deserve hell, so that nation must suffer. Christians all over the world deserve to decline because they did not accept me. December 25th, 1974. What does it mean when... Uh, let, let me comment on that. When, when Reverend Moon met Jesus in spirit when he was 16 years old, he came from a Presbyterian family. He himself was a Christian before he met Jesus. Jesus gave him this anointment, this commission, this charge. Then his message that he brought to the Christian churches, the mainline churches in Korea at the time, which I believe mainly were Presbyterian and Methodist, they rejected him. His intent was to bring that message to them. Basically, Reverend Moon is here doing the best he can to fulfill what he conceives to be God's will. And he's told the followers of uh, the Unification Church countless times that he expects all of the members of our church to go beyond what he's done, to do better than what he's done, to work harder than he's done. I don't believe for a minute that Reverend Moon would feel that way. I think he fully expects that future generations, it will be a, a future generations in, in the 21st century and as the world goes on, will have even greater and greater uh, okay. works to do. Dr. Martin, so. just a closing wrap up here. I'll give you a quote to jump off on. In the Master Speaks on Prayer in the Spirit World, page 4, Reverend Moon said, I have already subjugated Satan on the spirit side. Now I have reached the point where I can rule the spirit world using only my physical senses. How does that contrast with Colossians 1? And give us a wrap-up statement of where Orthodox Christianity would come from. Well, of course, Colossians 1 tells you that the only way that you conquer the spirit world is by recognizing that Jesus Christ has done it in our place, that our conquest is through him, not through ourselves. That's why John says, you have overcome them, past tense, little children. That's us, not Mr. Moon. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the triumph of the Christian church is in the risen Christ, the historic Jesus Christ, who conquered for us. Satan is subject to him, and by Christ's power, the scripture says, we can conquer Satan. Behold, I give you power over the demons. They are in subjection to you in my name. That's the victory of the church, not Sun Myung Moon. Gentlemen, we appreciate. I think that we have learned a lot, and uh, Thomas and Tom, thank you for your uh, sensitive statements and for your sharing from your heart. We appreciate that. And Jerry and Dr. Martin, thank you for uh, the information that you've given to us. Good night. Hope you'll join us next week. Mm -hmm.